Hello, I'm Yanni. I'm a knitwear designer here at JW Anderson and I'm here to tell you about the basic stitches you're going to need to create this piece. The basic inspiration around this piece comes from old children's uh, toys, the colours in them, the checkerboards, uh, children's uh, colour books and picture books. And it's all worked into this very ruby cube kind of uh, patchwork pattern. The great thing about this design is that anyone can learn to do these stitches and once you learn the few simple basic stitches that you're going to need you're going to be able to create all of these squares and I'm going to show you also how to put them together and how you're going to be able to achieve the finished product. So here I have the instructions printed out that you can download from online. It walks you through all the stages you're going to um, need while you're creating this piece. And here I have all the tools laid out that you're going to need to create this project. So obviously you need yarn. I would suggest that you choose a wool yarn for this project. It's the easiest yarn to work with if you're a beginner and it also works the best with this design because it's quite lofty and it's easy to work with. It's light and it will create a nice feel to all your beautiful stitches that you're going to um, create. In terms of knitting needles, um, I personally like size 8 for this project, but everyone has a different handwriting, so maybe if you have a bit tighter handwriting, you might want to go up to 10, or if you're a bit looser handwriting, then maybe you want to go down to 7 or 6 even. You're going to have to have several balls in one colour because you're going to have to ply up the yarn. Um, if you don't find yarn that's thick enough to suit uh, this project. So here I have, for instance, this basic knitting wool and I'm going to use three, four plies to create uh, the stitches that I need. You're also going to need some scissors. You're going to need a darning needle to put together your panels. Make sure your needle is uh, big enough so you can thread your yarn through it. Some safety pins to help you put the pieces together. And then crochet hooks, if you prefer joining the panels with crochet hook, that's also an option. And then just a pencil to help you follow the instructions and make sure you sort of stay on track where you are in terms of your knitting. So we're going to start with the basic uh, start loop. I'm showing this to you on a one ply, but in reality you would be plying up the yarn and you'd have several ends of the same colour running through. I usually like to start with just one needle when I do my first cast on row, but you could also slide in two needles, especially if you have a tight handwriting, it's quite good to get your first row loose enough so it allows you enough room to then go into your first row and then your cast on stitches are not too tight. So here I created my first cast on row. You might want to cut a little bit off the end of your yarn here so it doesn't get tangled in your main knitting, but don't cut it too short because you're going to have to tie this into your square when it's finished. I'm going to show you with the terracotta yarn the basic garter stitch, which is a very simple stitch for a beginning to work because you're just knitting the basic stocking stitch and I'm going to continue to the end of my first row and then I'm just going to turn the work over and continue knitting with the basic stocking stitch until I get the required length of fabric. This is a really basic um, structure but it creates a very nice uh, textured surface and it's quite effective and especially when you ply your yarn to several plies you're gonna get very interesting textures with this technique. So next I'm going to show you the jacquard 
pattern that you have in your red and black yarns. I've already knitted my garter stitch square here in the terracotta and I've continued into my jacquard. The next basic stitch that you're going to need through this pattern is a purl stitch, which is the reverse side of your knit stitch. Now this stitch you need to still keep your yarn on your finger, but this time you will be bringing this yarn onto your needle then with this needle you're going to thread through both of these loops, loop over here and then bring it through and then again slide that loop off your needle. This is a really simple stitch as well in a sense but the challenge with this one is that you have to carry through both of your colours that you're knitting with, in this case black and red. And you're going to continue with your stocking stitch like you did in in this orange panel, but you're going to have to alterate between your red and your black yarn. So I'm going to do it again. This is a stitch that you just need a little bit time to get your head around it, but it's not that complicated in the end. So I'm bringing, I brought the um, yarn on the needle on my left hand, and then I'm just going to slide the needle through both of these loops, thread it through, and then slide that loop off the needle. I'm here doing two on red and one on black and then you just alterate the yarn on your finger. You're going to get the knit surface on your right side and then on the back of your knitting you see all your loops of your intarsia going across when you change the colour. But that's part of the design, it's part of the technique this is a very traditional pattern technique that is used in knitting throughout the history. So it's quite a nice way to create a different color combinations in your cardigan. So then I'm going to show you the last stage of this project, which is putting all your panels together. So here I've knitted all my squares for my sleeve and I've already joined some of the panels together, as you can see. The next I'm going to show you how to join the rib to your squares. I've knitted this rib separately. It's good to use a bit thinner needle for your rib. Maybe you want to go down to number four or number five which is a bit smaller size from what you used creating these squares. You're also going to need a darning needle. Make sure that you have a needle that's thick, uh, big enough to allow your yarn to thread through. And I like to use the actual yarn I've used knitting the piece because it kind of looks more integral when you put it all together. So I'm just going to go in at the stitches of the rib and then come to the other side of my square. Next I'm going to join this last panel of squares into the main body of the sleeve. And it's following the same principle what you already used joining the rib into your squares. So again, you can either work with the crochet hook or a darning needle. And this design really has this type of craftsmanship element into it. So all the seams that you're doing can be external, meaning that you can leave these stitches as features and you can have the seams um, kissing each other like I've done here, so that it looks sort of like a blanket. Now we are in the final stage where I've finished pretty much everything else. I've only had the last sleeve to put together. I have kept it as a one piece for now, one panel. And then I've created an opening already in my main body for my sleeve to go into. For this part, you're going to need um, some safety pins, scissors, darning needle, or crochet hooks, depending on what you prefer as a technique to join the panels together. I'm going to do this one on a crochet hook, but you could just as well use a darning needle. 
it might be easier to just safety pin uh, parts of this seam before you start uh, attaching them so that you can sort of align where you want your squares to sit. The beauty of this design is that it's kind of um, celebrating all the imperfections of the knitting. We have left all the little ends hanging on the edges of the squares and we're also using the attaching stitching lines as a feature. So don't worry too much if it's not absolutely perfect or it doesn't look like perfectly put together. It's part of the design and it should be sort of celebrated in the making as well. So when you put the sleeve into the body, you're going to um, use the crochet hook and then just go into your stitch and slip your yarn through. You're going to get this chain on the other side of your knitting, whereas the other side, the yarn is just going to look like a regular stitching line. And I suggest you use just one ply of your yarn at this stage, because it al allows you to really go into the stitches and it doesn't get tangled so easily. 